Weird Science. It's the revolution. Ultimate Spider-Man. Number six. And uh, it's a book that had two, I thought, down issues. Me and you both thought that we weren't doing much. We had dinners and, and little things going on. We had a background of Harry Osborn even in the last issue, but not a lot of Spider-Man. So we do get some Spider-Man this week. Yeah, I have a, I have a problem with by the end. I think there's some big troubles going on, but it is, as I said, Ultimate Spider-Man. Number six, written by Jonathan Hickman. Marco Cicchetto is back on art, colors by Matthew Wilson, letters by VCs Corey Petit. And you start out this issue, and it is a kind of jump back and forth in time type of deal. Peter comes in for a little meal at the end of the day, I guess it was, and he is beat to crap. It looks like he just got jumped. Yeah. I, I thought he was just going to tell a lie. Just say. When he walked into a doorknob. Yeah, <laughs> that I got mugged. <laughs> Something like that, but he lets it go too long, and then May jumps in and says, "Oh, everybody felt weird here. They almost robotic." I thought May was a little smarter than that. Yeah, to, and to blurt it then, out. Yes, and then even then, when she like goes off to bed and she just like runs off and says, "Okay, bye, see you, Super Daddy." It just felt weird, and you have Richard. He's kind of a little deal, and Mary Jane wants to get busy. It seems. Yeah. It, it felt weird, the idea of presenting like, hey, I'm a superhero in a world that really doesn't know what that is. So not even explaining the idea of just saying, hey, I go after the bad guys, but nobody wants to know what that means, who it was, because it ended up being Wilson Fisk. We actually see that. We actually go from there as it seems the Parker family is being made well aware that Peter is a superhero. Uh, and you do end up where Fisk, he, he, it's funny. He's looking out the window right at, you know, Harry Green Goblin and Peter Spider-Man because he ends up saying that he's, he knows they're out there. They're, they're doing a stakeout for no reason. He knows they're there. He -hmm. mentions that he has cameras all around the place in New York City and he's been keeping tabs on them, but eventually, They're going to bust in. But the big play again here is the idea of secret identities. You have Harry say, hey, Peter. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, we need code names. I don't care what you think, but I need a secret identity. I need to protect myself and my family. And they have a thing and there's kind of a, you know, an attempt at humor, I guess, where they have said, Harry's like, I don't have a code name. He's like, yeah, everybody's calling you Green Goblin. Oh, who's everybody? Oh, the newspaper, people downtown, this <laughs> yeah, hobo that yeah. lives in the alley, the internet. Uh, and he's like, nobody can give me a nickname. Well, what are your nickname going to be? Eh, I kind of like Green Goblin. Yeah, I'm good with it. It's a little chatter, I, and right? Then, uh, did you realize that Spider-Man wasn't Spider-Man yet? Yeah, I, mean, I thought that it was just that. I thought that, I swear to God, I thought that that would be something that maybe, you know, Tony in his little ball of info and stuff like him, that. Yeah. I mean, the idea... That in the Ultimates, we found out that he told Hank that he was a wife beater. And yet Tony doesn't say, by the way, I have this spider suit. We call you Spider-Man. Seemed kind of weird, but I guess you're leaving it up for grabs. Uh, But they end up talking about Peter says, I don't really like to break the rules. I've never been arrested, things like that. And then, well, you know, I won't tell anybody if you don't. They bust into the office of Wilson Fisk. And what they're doing here is because when Bullseye told them, which was verification. You, Harry already knew that there's people, there's things involved, the maker council, all that. He doesn't know the particulars, but he kind of had, it's like a conspiracy theory that then you find out, oh God, it is real. And now you want to know more. And they're going to bust into Fisk's office to demand him, hey, what's going on? Who's mm-hmm. above you? I don't know what they thought was going to happen here. I mean, Fisk is huge. He's a huge guy. When yeah. they're standing there, Next He's like to eight him. feet tall. Oh my god! Like the idea, yeah, you have these superhero costumes and things like that, whatever. But if you're there thinking that Fisk is part of the Illuminati type conspiracy deal, I kind of think that he might have either bodyguards all over, which they kind of stake out to see if there isn't. There's a reason why he doesn't. He's super enhanced. He ends <laughs> up saying that, "Hey, I just I I take it that he just means he got a lot of ink." Yeah, well, what's with those tattoos? Holy moly. Like, he's got these tribal tattoos out the wazoo there. But he says, I, it's good timing. I just ended up getting enhanced. You know, he's the Jose Canseco of the Ultimate Universe here. Mm-hmm. And he is going to fight both 
Peter. I thought he was going to kill Green Goblin. Yeah, it, it puts a cage around them, but then seems I got a little lost in the the idea. It's a cage match. Oh yeah, like it is. I thought that he was just putting a cage around them, which might have. Been the better play. No, he's he, going all out on it. He just makes a, a Royal Rumble cage <laughs> match here, and he is going to kill them. And in this, Spider, you know, Peter's only been doing this for about a month. Harry said, "You're kind of overmatched here with with Fisk." And we already know the thing is with this, you're not going to get that upset. Maybe the idea that you're supposed to think that I hope Harry survives because Peter, we already saw him, but he's not reacting as if he just saw. You know, a new friend die when he went into his family. So at least we know he survives, but we get to see them just beating the crap out of each other. I mean, they're really going to town and Fisk. He's pretty formidable. And when he takes off that deal, boy, he has some tats there. And he's a big dude. And yeah, they're fighting and going back and forth. But really, they're lucky that Fisk didn't kill him. Now, he mentions to them when they come in, he's like, oh, finally, you came. I've been waiting for days, was wondering if I was just going to have to invite you in because I have (laughs) cameras all around. Continuing that idea of secret identities and how important they are and secrets and things like that. So you have Fisk watching everywhere. You do have Peter mentioning secret identities. We already had Harry say he's already told Gwen and he doesn't really care about that. But when they're fighting, they're going and they're going to die. And the, the thing that saves them is Harry just basically blows up the, the deal. I mean, mm-hmm. he has the goblin glider come in and just blow up the side of this building, which I don't think this just ends up being something that people aren't aware of either. Yeah, shot a missile at it. Yeah, it looks like an, another terrorist attack. Yeah, it's just and, yeah, right? sad. I mean, yeah. it's bad. And yeah. so they end up going and grabbing and getting off in the glider, but they, they're the crap beat out of them. And Fisk seems like he's just getting started. Like, he's laughing. He's, he's got some He's like Hulk things. strength. Almost. Oh, my God. He's huge. And so that leads back to Peter telling his family. He told them this story. They are not reacting as if he told them this story. Like, no. this is me saying to my kids, I tripped on my way to the store. Not, I ended up breaking into a, you know, pretty much where he works, fighting Wilson Fisk. <laughs> who seems to be super powered and then having to get out by launching a missile into the side of the and building. And riding a glider out And then there. riding a glider off with the Green Goblin, which that wouldn't mean much to them, whatever. But the idea is just sitting there, looks like he's just beat the crap, and they're like, oh, we're going to have to talk about this later. May goes, night, daddy. See you, Superman. And, and Richard's like, oh, I'm kind of upset you didn't tell me, but I, I have questions, some ideas. but I'll talk to you later, I guess. And then you end up where Mary Jane, they, they just go off to bed. Yeah, and then just... Mary Jane says, like, standing there, and Peter's like, okay, I, and I'm i wondering if you're mad. Mad? It's, it's, it's a little toned down from what I think this scene would have been and should have been. I mean, the idea that he almost died and blew up the side of a building. And maybe even the idea that the kids would be like, are, are you going to get arrested? Are you going to be in trouble? You, you blew up. A are building. people going to try to kill us? Yeah, are we going to? And he says, though, again, with the identities and things, he says, we're all safe. She says, you sure. end up Mary Jane says, are you safe? Peter, are we safe? And he says, yes, I believe so. Right there means he doesn't really. But no one knows who isn't a friend. I plan to keep it that way. And speaking of, this is a family secret. May, you got to keep your mouth shut. Everybody was surprised that May was able to keep her mouth shut for four months, actually. But in the meantime, says May, you can't say anything, whatever. It's kind of played a little lighthearted, but they did, again, it seems like everybody's like on Zola. They're all zombies walking around. But keep in mind, I keep mentioning, kind of stressing the secret identity sort of thing, because when everybody goes to bed, Richard, hey, I have some questions. And I have some, too. <laughs> but he, he ends up going off and he's like, hey, dad, please be careful. He's kind of sullen. He walks away. So that's where you end up having Peter say, so are you mad? Whatever. And she's like, no, nah, it makes sense. It's one of those, you know, he's been out at night. Maybe she was worried about that. But she wants to see him in the costume. We're going to get sexy, sexy costume time. Mm-hmm. He goes and gets the costume on. And the big play, though, is, is that, hey, I don't have a, an identity. I don't have a code name. And since she's a PR person, she makes the joke, well, you can't hire me for that, but I think it's obvious. I think your code name should be Spider-Man. You're Spider-Man. That's fine, right? 
Mm-hmm. The problem I have is they are swinging outside. Mary Jane is holding on the back of Spider-Man. This had said that he has cameras. Maybe you can tell me he doesn't have cameras everywhere, but there are cameras everywhere. Just in general in New York, they're everywhere. And he could t- she is now Broad there. Daylight. Whether or not it's okay, they're married, it doesn't matter. She is smiling, being swung around the town by Spider-Man. She is now a target. She is full out a target, and this is looking for a target. Uh, people have been debating how this is going to play. When Stacy's in the book, I said if they kill May, I'll, I'll kill somebody Could be else. Could the brother, but, though, Richard. Yeah, or the brother. But even so, now there is a clear line to the family with Mary Jane just swinging around. And I would not be shocked if it's the idea where Fisk, in the next couple issues, has a photo. Hey, did you see this? And it's Mary Jane. Give me a facial scan. Mary Words. Jane isn't exactly just, you know, say she has this big PR deal and was even dealing with Harry Osborne at one point before he died or, or Norman Osborne before he died. And now is dealing with Norman and that all this stuff. It could be on the cover of the bugle. Also, this is the thing when you look up the deal. Oh, my God. You know who Mary Jane is related to? Oh, yeah. The, the uncle of her husband. Ben Parker. It, it, it all connects. Like, whether or not you have to make the idea of saying, oh, they're mad, you don't have to think that's big, but there's connections. That could lead to so many people getting hurt now. I don't know what he is thinking after all of this and saying, hey, we can't go about and say names or whatever. And I think it's being played off as just not really understanding what it is, you know, in the superhero world with villains and things like that. And I think there might be a problem. But overall, again, a very quick issue. I think people will tend to rate this a little higher because there's actually action in it and you get Spider-Man. But I don't know. It just feels like there's such a disconnect in this book with the characters. They all seem to be sleepwalking through the book at points Mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel like it really hits. It doesn't feel like it has a lot of weight or substance to it at points. It feels like sometimes there's checklists. Hey, you got to fight this. You got to do this. This didn't feel as big as I thought it might. Uh, but what would you give it? Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's okay. I'm I'm right on a seven. I think. Yeah, I think There's... I'm gonna go seven five. But and I think that we gave the others, you know, a six, six five, or whatever. So I do like it more. But I just I, it, at the end when I saw Mary Jane swinging around, I'm like, uh, stay inside. Uh, it seemed like even with your meat bashed up face that she wanted to maybe get busy. Do that. Don't go swinging around town. Weird science is the revolution.